This is George Edmonds with MotionVFX.com, introducing M Transition Music Video. The city is up in the madness, yeah. the people is giving the damage, yeah. they turn into animal savage, so rhinos and hippos and mammoths, the hero was coming, I'm locked in, locked you in. know that I'm winning, I'm top 10, top you 10. know that I came from the dark pain, you want it, you get it, you drop dead. <laughs> Once you've installed M Transition Music Video via M Installer, it can be located in your transitions. As you can see here, we have 60 transitions. If you'd like to get a real-time preview of how these can look, you can simply take your cursor and scrub over. There are a bunch of different unique transitions and we won't be going over all 60 today, but we will give you some examples of how some of these look. So one of the first ones I want to show you is going to be our custom mask. So to apply, simply click and drag in between the two clips that you would like to add the transition for. I'm going to take my cursor and set that over the very beginning just so that you can see that we do have a lot of these on-screen controls here. Now, of course, we cannot see what these on-screen controls are doing yet. I'm going to use my arrow key and just kind of move forward. And then you can see where that is happening. And that is our second clip there. So I'm going to take all of these and I'm just going to start moving these down and start creating my mask over my next video clip here. Now with that said, you can see that we have a lot of on-screen controls and maybe we don't need this many. So I'm going to come over into my inspector and change my number of mask edges to, let's try nine and see how that does, okay? Now you can see we have less of those, but we can very quickly kind of figure out what our mask is gonna be doing. And stylistically, this is not supposed to be perfect. This is supposed to look, you know, sort of like a paper cutout or something like that. So we have those edges there. And of course, like I said, over in our inspector, we can also look, we've got a zoom amount. So you can see how we can zoom that in and out. And then we have saturation. So if we did not want that to be black and white, if we wanted that to be saturated, we can adjust that here. And we have our footage size and we can also adjust the footage size as well. So you can see this mask offset that I'm using and you can see how that is looking. So of course, if you are doing any sort of zooms or footage size changes, you're going to see a little bit of that mask. So with that said, I just want to bring that over where it is not visible on our next clip. And then let's see how that looks. We can actually see a little bit of that mask still there. So I'm just going to use my mask offset, bring that over until it disappears and using our arrow keys. And there we go. So now we've got a really clean, really cool looking offset. And then that color pops right back in. Awesome. All right, on this next clip, I'd like to show you our caption slide. So I'm going to click and drag that in between our two clips. Using my arrow keys, you can see that we just have a really cool slide in of some text in our inspector. If we want to make changes, we can adjust these parameters. So maybe we could change our text from do it now to go for it. Maybe something like that. Really nice. If we want to change our title font or size or anything like that, we do so down here in our inspector. All right, let's check that out. Now let's say that I wanted that to go for a little longer. You can simply take your cursor and drag your handles out to make that transition longer in duration. And then it will adjust accordingly. And now we have that on screen for a little bit longer. And of course that is how you would do for any of these transitions. Why don't we scroll down a bit and we can take a look at some of our other types of transitions. So we have some really cool flicker smears. So I'm going to click and drag that in, let you see how those look. Again, really, really fast. Over in our inspector, if we wanna make changes to our texture, we can do so here by clicking and dragging. If we want to toggle those negatives on and off, we can do so here. And we have a prism, we have prism amount. So you can see a bit of like prism chromatic aberration style looking there 
underneath our smears and then if we want to adjust where those are we can do so with our prism angle nice so something else that's a lot of fun that you can do with these transitions specifically is transitioning onto the exact same footage so what i mean by that is i'm going to tap b and i'm going to do maybe a couple blade cuts here and then I can drag transitions on top of the same footage and it works like a really quick effect. So why don't we drag our kaleidoscope? We could do our light flash. And maybe why don't we do a light leak roll just so you can see how this looks by using it on top of your own footage. Scrolling down, we can take a look at some of these other types of transitions. Again, there are so many, we can't go over all of those. Why don't we do our torn paper so we can drag this in on top. This one's a really simple one to use. Over in our inspector, we have rips colorized. We can just colorize those rips if we would like. Maybe give it a little bit of a darker paper edge there and then we're off to the races. Several of these have some drop zone elements as well, so we can go over those. Let's use our drop zone flicker. We can drag this into our next clip, and then you can see here that we have a drop zone kind of flashing in and then going to our next scene there. So apply just like any other drop zone, just click and you can use footage that's already inside of your timeline or you can use footage over in your browser. So let's say that I wanted that clip in there. And then we can do apply clip. And then if we want to scale that drop zone, maybe something like that, pan it over, bring it up. We can make changes, we can flip this, we can change the color by going to our mask hue and change the color there, mask saturation and value. So that's gonna be like a basically a brightness level, but it also has to do with the blend mode of difference. So this last one that I'm gonna show you is really, really neat. And this is going to be a drop zones position match. So I'm going to drag that in between. And I want you to notice that we have a ton of drop zone elements in here. Now you are able to modify that from 10 all the way to one. So depending on how many you want to show, why don't we just leave it as default of five at the moment so that I can show you how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab some random clips and I'm going to start populating those. So you can see this grid here. Now this grid is not necessarily part of the transition. This is here so that you can match some of your frames from scene to scene. So this is our first drop zone. So I'm just going to scale that up, bring them over just a bit, bring them down on Y. There we go. Then I'm gonna use my arrow in my timeline and I'm just going to move over to the next drop zone, which is drop zone two. We're gonna do the same thing. And we're just trying to match up similar shots or similar parts of our frame. So you can see there's a bulge there too that kind of helps us out. They don't have to be perfect, but as long as they're close. And in this last one, this probably wasn't the best one to use. So we're just going to change that really quickly. There we go. Something like that. So now that we have gotten that done, we can come down here to our grid and we can make changes to that or we can simply just turn it off. And now these transitions are all going to have a reference on the area that we selected, which was kind of our head and face area. So maybe it's like a flashback scene or something like that. And of course, the more drop zones that you do, the faster that is going to happen. 
And lastly, let's do our Q mark. So I'm going to drag this in between these two clips and you can see that we've got a couple on-screen controls here. So this first one is our first kind of hole that we're popping open. We'll use our arrow on our timeline, come over and maybe we want to kind of populate over his head or something like that. And then our third arrow and we can maybe go back to him and it'll be a little bit bigger. Sweet, and that's about it. Like I said, there are 60 transitions. All of them are very unique, while at the same time work really well together to create an incredible music video. We can't wait to see what you do with these transitions. Again, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.